there have been a few times where they've said good luck. There's been a few times uh, even, you know, with Harry, having Mary Magdalene pal around in season one. Season two is a little bit better uh, with certain things, but even last night um, with... Hey everybody, welcome to Contramundum Pro Mundo. I'm Richard, and this is where I help you be against the world for the sake of the world. Contra Thoughts coming up now. All right, so we're talking about The Chosen. Chosen TV show, wildly popular online TV show. And uh, first and foremost, I have to just give a brief bit of background of me. Uh, I am a husband. I'm a father of four. I'm a pastor of a uh, Southern Baptist church. Don't worry, we're not woke. And um, yeah, trying to be in this world and live for Christ and serve him as king. But using this technology, using these things, using these means to connect people, to push against the world, even push against the church. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing today, the church general, um, not any particular denomination or particular people per se, although, of course, it's talking about the chosen, the TV show with Jesus and the apostles and basically first century life and what that looked like. I um, have watched... The Chosen. I've watched a lot of The Chosen. And so I'm not a hater, as it were, uh, at all. In fact, I was disturbed to see a few different things. Uh, and there was a few things early on in the first season in particular, uh, where Mary Magdalene um, is hanging around with all the disciples, and the disciples don't have their wives, and it's just kind of like, you know, I mean, uh, it's mentioned where, you know, do we not have like Peter, and I forget where in the scripture it says, you know, that have the right to take along a believing wife. Um, so certainly Peter would have brought his wife and it actually depicts his wife. So it kind of goes against the whole Roman Catholic thing, which is good. Although last night's episode, the Christmas episode, um, really kind of reinforced two things for me. And uh, yeah, so... We'll get into that, but a word from our sponsor first. Coffee. No, I don't have any sponsors, but if you want me to sponsor something, you, let me you clicked on this for The Chosen. Or for my beautiful face, one of the two. <laughs> the Chosen is done incredibly well. If you've not watched it, it's really well done. Uh, I used to be, uh, used to, I'm from California, and I worked loosely in film uh, for a while, and pursued that and worked on different film sets and things like that. The thing I've always had a problem with as being a believer for the last decade or so and growing up in the church is the kitschiness, cheesiness, campiness of Christian stuff. And they always would put a you know nomenclature in front of it, Christian movies, Christian this, Christian that, uh, Christian music even. And it's just like, why, why do we just have to just make good stuff? Does God not own everything? Um, is it not, not all unto him anyway? That's tiny, though. The Chosen, however, is done so well. It's so well done. Drop a comment. Tell me if you've already watched the show. And uh, feel free to push back a little bit, uh, or a lot of it, if you want. And if you dislike, I know they took down this thing, the number count. So hit a dislike, or type it, rather. Uh, that way people can see if you dislike it. Because we can still be transparent here, because many of us are Christians. And we love the truth, and we have the truth, and it has set us free. First and foremost, The Chosen is a fabulous, well-done show. The acting is great. The sound is great. The sets are really great. The writing, <clears throat> easily, easily, easily the worst. Easily the worst. I mean, everything's like a 9 and a 10 out of 10. 9 and 9, 10, 10, 10. Like the writing's like a 2 or a 3. Uh, there have been a few times where they've said good luck. There's been a few times... Uh, even, you know, with Harry, having Mary Magdalene pal around in season one. Season two was a little bit better uh, with certain things. But even last night um, with the uh, Christmas episode, where it was basically, if you've watched it, again, let me know, is 4 BC, which is really right where, around where Christ um, was born. There's a church calendar they had messed up, and now it's technically 3 or 4 BC. Um, what was that? And then it also bounces to 48 A.D. So, of course, Jesus was crucified, crucified around uh, 30 A.D., of course, resurrected, ascended, 
and then the church's building. And many of the letters, uh, the Gospels and so on, Galatians, Matthew, James, were all written in the late 40s. Uh, sometimes, er, some people even believe as early as the early 40s. Uh, so just a mere decade and a half or so after the ascension. And this is saying 48. So it does depict Luke. It talks about Luke, Mary Magdalene, Mary, uh, Jesus's mother, and so on. But the trouble is, and I'll do the two points of why I have problem with this episode. Number one is it has Mary sneaking in um, with a, a driver. He's on a wagon. He's got fruits and whatever. And he sneaks in past a Roman to meet meet somebody. So he gets out and it reveals Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there. And then Mary Magdalene is the one who was being snuck in. Okay, that's cool. You know, there's a little, I mean, there's all sorts of spurious extra stuff about Mary and uh, Jesus dating and Mary uh, having his baby and blah, 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 and getting married and all that. It's, just, it's nonsense. Um, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But people still will believe certain things or even uh, the church in general uh, have adopted many things or created things over the years. Roman Catholic, I have a lot of reasons why I'm not a Roman Catholic. Uh, one of which is this, the Mariolatry. So number one is the Mariolatry. Um, and the creator, Dallas Jenkins, isn't a, a, a Roman Catholic, but Jesus, the character, uh, the guy who plays Jesus, is, and a few other people. And I, I wouldn't bring this up if I didn't already have warrant. Mary calls, Mary Magdalene calls Mary, Jesus' mother, Mother Mary. And she calls her that more than once. She calls her that to Luke, and I'll get more to number two here in a moment, because she delivers a message. But she says, Mother Mary this and Mother Mary that. And it's like, the Bible never calls her Mother Mary. But of course, the Roman Catholics believe that she was also sinless, and there was an immaculate conception and all that other stuff, and there you have to go back to her mother. I believe it was Anna, was Mary's mother. And, you know, because how, how could a sinless man come from a sinless woman? It's like, okay, so if Jesus was sinless, Mary must have been sinless. But if Mary was sinless, wouldn't her mother have to be sinless? And then wouldn't Anna, I believe it was her name, also have to be sinless? Like, then you're, then you, that's the whole point. That's why Jesus was born of a virgin, to avoid the curse of sin. Duh. So, Mary's great, you know, but there really isn't that much about her outside the gospels and you know to, to act like wow well, you know we do this or we pray through mary i mean that's what roman catholics do uh and maybe you're roman catholic and maybe you don't do that or something like that drop me a comment let me know um that's fine I'm, this is a everybody channel this is not a christians only or protestants only channel but what we need to do is we need to have scripture first first and foremost is scripture and that's it now there's other things that are helps and we can talk about this or that cool history. I love history. I'm a history guy. Um, church history, art history, American history, world history. I love it. I really do. We can learn a lot from the past. But what we need to do is always have the scripture as the forefront. Okay. So we're talking about Mary. There's also another Mary. I think there's three or four Marys. Of course, there's Mary, uh, Martha, and Lazarus. who are also in there as well. Uh, so Mary is a very common name, just like it kind of is today, or at least it was a number of years ago. But there is nowhere, if you search Mary in your favorite Bible translation or Bible um, program, Mother Mary. There's never a talk about Mother Mary. So, I mean, James himself was the half-brother of Jesus, the author of James. Now, again, Roman Catholics want to have perpetuate uh, the lie that Mary was perpetually virgin, which is just ridiculous. I mean, again, if you if you think about it, in a common sense, a two <laughs> husband and wife get married. They're not going to, you know, like, give me a break. It's <sighs> so Mother Mary, she calls her Mother Mary. And that's a little small. But the problem with that is, and this is one of the reasons why I bring it up is most recently, I don't know, within the last number of weeks, maybe months now, um, Dallas Jenkins, the creator, he was a great guy. Seems like a great guy. He does stuff like this. You've probably watched some of this stuff. And he talks to people and they, they sell the merch and they do this and they promote that. Great. He wants to ultimately preach 
the gospel. He wants people to go to the text. And he says this more than once. And this is my critique of some others who are like, ah, the chosen's a bunch of heretics. Avoid the chosen. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you have to take it with a large grain of salt <laughs> and spit out the bones, as it were, or just, you know, avoid it altogether. But it's not flawless. It could be. It could be so much even. It could be so, so much better. It could be so much better. But Dallas Jenkins, the creator, and um, Jonathan R Rumi, Romeri, I forget how to say his name, uh, who's a Roman Catholic, met the Pope. And there's clips and video, and they're just giddy and eager. And they've got this, and they've got a book, and the rosaries, and, you know, this whole thing. And especially Jonathan, I don't know if Dallas does. And I understand, you know, this inclusive sort of thing. You want to be friends and quote-unquote tolerant or whatever. I get it. Sure, you know, it's 21st century. I get it. But this Pope isn't even like a good Pope if you're a Roman Catholic. Like if I was Roman Catholic, I had a good friend. He actually died in a car accident um, over the summer. It's kind of crazy. But uh, he was a Roman Catholic. And he was really transitioning away from it because there were so many problems. And he actually had a lot of questions. We had a lot of good conversations. Anyway, uh, very tragic story. He did not like the Pope at all, especially. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, he was a standard conservative traditional guy. The Pope is not a friend to tradition or standards at all. And yet, you know, these guys are celebrating him. So that's why, you know, you have this. And then further still, Dallas Jenkins, another part, uh, a number of months back, also in an interview, basically said that Mormons are our brothers and sisters. But Mormons aren't our brothers and sisters in Christ, not even close. I mean, that shows either you're just insanely ignorant uh, or you're trying to be deceptive. There's really no other option. And yeah, Mormons, Mormons are not, I mean, they, they believe in actually multiple gods, but that's another episode for another time. So we know John lived, uh, was not, um, crucified or killed, martyred, whatever. John should have been the one delivering that message. And this takes me to number two, um, the Mary taking the message, meeting other Mary, Jesus's mother, Mary, that should have been John. Because, well, Jesus on the cross, if you remember, I think it's John 19, um, entrusts Jesus. might be a different one. These are just like thumbnails. It's in the Gospels. And Jesus is crucified and he says, behold your mother, right? And behold your son. And he basically gives, because Joseph, for all accounts, Jesus' father is gone. He probably died in some accident. Most theologians and, and historians believe he died in some carpentry accident. He was probably like a mason or something like that, like building, uh, maybe not even necessarily building tables, but just building stuff. He might have also built tables. Anyway, he died most likely. We don't see him at all in the Gospels. We see him at age 12. So between age 12 and age 30, Joseph, Jesus' father, earthly father, died. So in that tradition, in that culture, and even cultures today, you have to look to your elderly parents, right? You have to look after them. Jesus is being crucified. Now, why would John, maybe Roman Catholics have this as a reason, I don't know. Why would John be his, um, her son, though? Because she has James and all these other people. Well, at that point, I would at least argue, they weren't believers. They weren't followers of the way. And so that could be the reason. Obviously, Jesus did what he did because he's Jesus. I'm not really sure. But the point remains that John should have, in this episode, Christmas episode of The Chosen, should have given that message. He should have came and, and did this, talked to Mary, Jesus' mother. Because secondly, number two, she then writes scripture. If you remember in Luke 1 and 2, the birth narratives, we see this all too well. Uh, we've sung it in church before, Mary's Magnificat. This is her... Uh, my soul magnifies the Lord. It's wonderful. It's poetic. It's scripture. I'm not saying it's not. Um, it's very, it's such a great, it's just poetic. It's great. It's verse um, 46, Luke number one, Luke chapter one. My soul exalts the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has heard, excuse me, had regard for his humble state of his bond servant. For behold, for behold from this time, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. It's a great, and, and if you can sing it, it's great. And singing scripture is great. And the Spirit had us have this, right, in our text, okay? And just because it's a woman, sometimes people get 
pendulum swing so much that you know they they either have women do everything and ah, women can be pastors we're all one in christ what's the big deal no text is very clear men are called to be pastors women are called uh well to birth children uh that's one of them like there's standard roles and principles within creation and since god created all things he's the one who makes the rules not us <laughs> However, there's others that say, I'll oh, swing back the other way and say, you know, we can't ever have a woman do anything. Women can't even look. Women have to be silent. Women have to sit over there. And we've seen this in church history as well. That's also wrong. I mean, Jesus reveals himself to women first and foremost uh, after the resurrection and many other places as well. Women are very highly regarded compared to the rest of the culture and the rest of the time in this generation, in this uh, place. Women are way, way up here. And of course, the feminists and others and the leftists hate, you know, and they want to manipulate and change even what Jesus did. But if you're comparing it to what Jesus is saying then to the rest of the culture and really the rest of the world, even today, uh, Jesus regarded women as equal with men, no doubt. And we are, we're all, uh, we're all made in God's image in that regard. Everybody can come to the knowledge of the truth. But the number two is the fact that Mary Magdalene, if you've wrote this, or if you've seen this, I rather, uh, let me know. Mary Magdalene writes what Mary, Jesus's mom, Jesus's mother, writes. Because she basically tells her, tells her, hey, you know what? Find Luke, who's compiling the gospel, right? We know that. Okay, great. And you might be thinking, man, you're just nitpicking. Okay, well, maybe. But I'll just, just hear me out. <sighs> Mary, Jesus's mother, tells her, oh, there was a poem that basically, you know, when I saw Elizabeth, she called me blessed. And the baby in her womb leaped, leapt when she found uh, my baby was there, Jesus and John the Baptist, right? And because they were cousins, second cousins or whatever. And she obviously told this to Luke or somebody told this to Luke, right? Because it's in the Bible. But we don't know at all. It's possible. It's possible. Sure. But a lot of things are possible. It's very possible, or it's possible, that Mary Magdalene was told this by Mary, Jesus' mother. Probably not. But probably not. Just because something's possible. Like, it's possible the sun won't come up tomorrow, right? It's possible. But it's not very likely. It's not probable. So it's possible. But this is my rub with the Chosen, is they exalt, and they're really putting women, and they're blurring a lot of lines especially with the female male roles. And I understand why they're doing it. They're doing it because of the culture. They're not doing it because of the text of scripture. They're not doing it because of history. They're doing it because of the culture. Because the culture's uh, and just constantly has us in this vice and is just turning it tighter and tighter and tighter every single day. And you either stand and say, no, I'm not going to be in that vice. Have fun. Or you slowly go, okay, and you capitulate. It's one of the two options. So Mary Magdalene writes scripture and gives it to Luke. Now, Luke, of course, is quote unquote writing scripture. And sure, you might be thinking, well, dude, come on. What's the big deal? Just, just, you're being so nitpicky. Like you're a hyper complimentarian. Like get out of here. Maybe. But again, with season one and Mary palling around with the disciples the whole time when she's not a disciple, we all know that. And they don't say she is, but they basically act like she is. And then here's the thing. This is the kicker. If you don't know your Bible, which most of us don't, me included, I don't know it as well as I should, and you probably don't either, people then are easily deceived. And then they think, oh yeah, this and this and this. Now, my objections aren't against the second commandment, you know, creating images and idols and whatever. Some people say that and I don't want to do this and great. But then they take it so far and say, you know, no art, no this, no that. Oh, it's just, that's just silly. Uh, I mean, look at the blue sky and the green grass, the mountains, the valleys, and everything else. Look at all the different created elements of the world. God cares about beauty. That's why I like aesthetics and things. It's so wonderful. But we're not supposed to have images, right? We're not supposed to be worshiping those images. That's the thing. And are people worshiping the chosen? Maybe. I don't know. Um are they helps to worship? Eh, yeah, that's pretty dangerous. But if it's just a remembrance, if it's a reminder to go to your text 
And that's what Dallas Jenkins says. Go to your text. I want you to look at this. Because they're filling in a lot of the white spots of the possibility of these things. Now, again, 90% of the time, I don't have a problem with the Chosen. It's that 10% or so that I have a problem with. That's big enough for me to make this video. Jesus' mother isn't Mother Mary. You look at Roman Catholicism the perpetual virginity of her, there's all this other stuff, Mariolatry, the worship of, or the veneration, they use the word veneration, not worship, because, you know, that's idolatry. But it's basically functional idolatry. Mary Magdalene basically being an apostle or a disciple, and that's that's a big no-no. That's not okay. Because that's not the case. That's not at all. There's no indication whatsoever for us to think that. But people who are either baby Christians, just freshly saved, can easily be led astray and you're just going to get a wrong view of the scripture you're going to get a wrong view of god god and everything else so anyway i hope you found this helpful if you did uh, i would appreciate a like um and if you didn't like it that's okay hit dis type dislike down in the comments right down here <laughs> uh, but if you did like this share it too please please share it and uh, please subscribe um i'm trying again to help you help others be against the world for the world. That's what contramundum is. Um, and seeking to have discernment in this life because the world is passing away. But Jesus says we have and will have trouble in this world. But fear not, I have overcome the world. So in the meantime, let us walk as if our Lord has overcome it and not cower and not fall back. All right. Until next time, we'll see you tomorrow.